today we're going to explore the spooky side of lower Manhattan. The temperatures are dropping, the leaves are starting to change color. We have haunted houses throughout the city, but let's explore some real life history that may have resulted in ghosts here in New York City. But before we get started, make sure that you click subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute. Yeah. Muffin talk. Ooh, uh, muffin talk. Muffin talk. Bringing healing to those who need them most. I'm here at Trinity Church Cemetery, which is home to over 120,000 bodies. That's an impressive number given that this cemetery is not very large. So how did they fit so many bodies into a relatively small space? Well, the story is that in 1822, the sexton actually ran around with a shovel and was testing the ground to find out where it was soft enough to redig because the bodies had decomposed. And he would then take the bones of the old bodies and put them in the charnel house and he would bury the new bodies here. Now this church does date back to 1698. So that has given the bodies a long opportunity to transform. One of the last bodies to be buried here was Eliza Hamilton. Now Eliza Hamilton waited nearly 50 years after her very famous husband's death in a duel with Aaron Burr before she would rejoin him eternally here at the cemetery of Trinity Church. I'm in the graveyard at St. Paul's Chapel. This is the final resting place of an actor named George Frederick Cook, who is memorialized in this monument. George Frederick Cook was really famous for his acclaimed interpretation of Shakespeare's Richard III. He also had a penchant for gambling, and some people believe that he got in over his head, quite literally. George Frederick Cook died in 1812. His body was moved here to St. Paul's Chapel in 1821, and when they moved the body, they discovered that it was missing his head. Now, many people believe that Cook's debts were so great that he actually had to sell his head to science after his death to help pay them off. Other people believe that his skull was actually used in productions of Hamlet across the East Coast as a prop for the character of Yorick. What do you think? Do you think that he had to sell his head to science? Do you think that his skull played Yorick to applause even after his death? Let me know in the comments below. Either way, people claim that when they're walking in St. Paul's Chapel at night, they will see a headless figure in the cemetery. I'm standing in front of the Brooklyn Bridge, a bridge that claimed the lives of 27 workers during its construction. Now the legend is that the most gruesome of the deaths that occurred while working on this bridge happened in 1875. Now this bridge is held up by cables that are made out of steel and that steel is strung very, very tight. And the story is that one of these wires actually snapped and ended up decapitating one of the workers. It's very, very rare to ever find the Brooklyn Bridge empty, but sometimes late at night, especially in colder weather, people do find themselves almost alone on the bridge. And they say that between the towers in the darkness, they sense a lone figure. And when they get closer to that figure, they realize that he's missing a head. So what do you think? Is this the ghost of the worker who was decapitated during the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge? Or maybe it's the ghost of George Frederick Cook who decided that he wanted to walk over the bridge and get the stunning views. Or maybe it's another headless ghost here in New York City. Did you know that many believe that the last victim of Jack the Ripper was murdered right here in New York City? That's right, April 24th, 1891, famous Bowery prostitute Carrie Brown, nicknamed Old Shakespeare because she would get drunk and recite Shakespearean monologues and no one knew if she was a famous actress or just someone who appreciated the bard. 
She was brutally murdered in her boarding house here on Catherine Slip. Now this gruesome murder was reminiscent of the Jack the Ripper murders in London. So many people believe that maybe Jack the Ripper had actually arrived in New York City. Chief NYPD Inspector Thomas Byrne had been very vocal criticizing the Scotland Yard, saying that if Jack the Ripper appeared in New York City, he would have Jack the Ripper caught in 24 hours or less. Well, this was his chance to prove himself. People thought that Jack the Ripper might be here in New York City. The case was very highly publicized, and guess what? He had no suspects. So in an act of desperation, he actually ended up arresting an Algerian man named Amir Ben Ali. Amir Ben Ali's nickname was Frenchy. Now there really wasn't much evidence, if any, to convict Amir Ben Ali. Anything was purely circumstantial. Nevertheless, Ali ended up being sentenced to lifetime in prison. It wasn't until a decade later that a piece of evidence would surface that under different circumstances might have actually exonerated Amir Ben Ali. It was enough to get him freed from prison and allowed to return to his home in Algeria. To this day, however, the murder of Carrie Brown, also known as Old Shakespeare, remains unsolved. What do you think? Was she a victim of Jack the Ripper? Let me know. I hope you've enjoyed this spooky look at New York City history. It's always interesting to look at history through different lenses. And around Halloween time, I love celebrating in New York City and looking at the city through the lens of its ghost stories. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you click subscribe. It helps me bring you more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and have a spooky day.